this assembly will come to order. Hamilton College recognizes our collective responsibility to acknowledge our colonial history. Our campus is located on the ancestral and traditional lands of the Oneida Nation. We express gratitude for the relationship between Chief Skenandoa and Samuel Kirkland, who founded the Hamilton Oneida Academy to educate indigenous and settler youth together. That institution became Hamilton College. Today, the Hamilton College community commits itself to engaging in solidarity with the Oneida Nation and to ensuring that the perspectives and cultures of indigenous peoples are honored and embraced. It is my honor to introduce President David Whitman. Good afternoon and welcome everyone to the very non-traditional tradition that is Class and Charter Day. This is, of course, an extraordinary and unsettling time but it's important that we hold on to the traditions that define college life, at least those traditions that don't require campus safety to come tamp things down. Your participation today signals that you too value the rituals that have been part of Hamilton's fabric for generations. Class and Charter Day dates to 1950, when then President Robert McEwen decided to combine the traditional class day with the college's informal birthday that is, that day in May 1812, when the college received its charter. In keeping with that tradition, we will recognize outstanding academic achievement and service with awards, lots of awards, and we will hear from two distinguished and well-respected Hamiltonians. Historically, the class and Charter Day speakers have been alumni, and that is the case today as well. You may know our first speaker as the author of the recent article titled, Parabolic Sandwiches for Functions on a Compact Interval and an Application to Projectile Motion. You probably have read it already, but if not, you may know our speaker as the most recent recipient of the Samuel and Helen Lang Prize for Excellence in Teaching. Rob Kantrowitz is Professor of Mathematics and a 1982 Hamilton graduate. He earned master's degrees and his doctor in mathematics from Syracuse University before returning to College Hill in 1990. The Lang Prize he won a year ago honors faculty members who have had a profoundly positive effect on their students. One such student in nominating Professor Kantrowitz for the award called attention to his keen ability to connect with students that transcends the classroom. Said another, his office hours are always bustling with students, not because the homework is too hard or his teaching is less than excellent, but because he creates an inviting and engaging environment. When I have a serious conundrum, generally in the form of a big life decision, Rob is my go-to guy. Whether it's regarding jobs, relationships, or just an awkward situation, Rob gives killer advice. When Dean of Faculty Suzanne Keen announced Professor Kantrowitz's selection for the Lang Prize last May, she summarized students' description of Rob as an excellent teacher in mathematics and an excellent teacher in life. Our second speaker graduated from Hamilton in 1990. Joe Kremer worked at Hamilton as an assistant basketball coach in the early 90s and is currently on leave from his role as Senior Associate Director of Admissions and Director of International Enrollment at the Pomfret School in Connecticut. Several months after his son graduated from Hamilton in 2018, Joe was diagnosed with brain cancer. He has undergone several surgeries since then to remove the tumor and to manage the resulting infections. In a talk he gave in October 2018, Joe recalled the challenges he faced, the obstacles he overcame, and the feeling of humility and thankfulness he experienced because, as he told the Pomfret community, there will always be people much worse off than we are, even in our lowest moments. His message that day, recognize you will encounter obstacles in life. Understand those obstacles will get more difficult over time, but learn to embrace those challenges because clearing obstacles is an important life skill. Given all that is going on right now, we are especially pleased that Joe has agreed to offer some words of encouragement today. After we hear from Rob and Joe, we'll have a musical interlude followed by the traditional presentation of this year's Class and Charter Day Awards by Associate Dean of Faculty and Professor of Literature, Anna Orlemans. 
The final student award will be the Milton Phileas Joseph Drown Prize Scholarship, and that will be followed by the announcement of faculty awards for teaching and scholarly achievement. Our program will conclude, of course, with the singing of Carissima, because that, after all, is another Hamilton tradition. Hamilton's first class in Charter Day was celebrated in 1950. Without a doubt, the year 2020 marks the first virtual class and Charter Day celebration in that span of 70 years. This got me to thinking about a few other Hamilton firsts. The first time I entered the Hamilton College Chapel was in the fall of 1978. It was the first assembly for first year orientation of the newly arrived first year class. First off, we're, we were apprised of proper protocol in the college chapel. Clapping one's hands in this space was sorely frowned upon. Rather, to signify approval or appreciation, one snapped one's fingers. Somewhat less official, to signify disagreement or dissent, one hissed. I noticed that these traditions seem to have disappeared over the years. The most significant aspect of that first assembly of that first year class that fall day in 1978 was that it was co-ed, the first time in Hamilton's 166 year history. It was the first class to be admitted to the newly merged Hamilton and Kirkland colleges. I would later learn that at a chapel assembly the preceding December, 1977, in which President Caravano was detailing the changes that were coming to College Hill, irate Kirkland College students charged forward and delivered an apple pie squarely to President Caravano's face. Apparently, word had not reached the Kirkland College campus just across the street that in the Hamilton Chapel, one expressed disagreement by hissing there were several other firsts that fall. For two decades, all newly admitted Hamilton fresh men were housed in Dunham. In the fall of 1978, the newly admitted first years, men and women, were more evenly distributed around campus. I was housed in South Residence Hall, first floor, first door on the right. The new housing arrangement did not go over well with the upper class students. South, for example, was prime real estate after Carnegie. Rooms in South and Carnegie had working fireplaces. Also, you have to remember, there was no Morris House, that was minor theater. There was no Eels, that was AD. There was no Ferguson, that was DU. There was no Wolcott, that was TDX. There was no Skenandoa, that was SIU. There was no Wertimer House, that was Deke. There was no Saunders House. That was actually Sylvia Saunders' house. She, she lived there. The lucky senior who drew the first pick in the housing lottery would inevitably choose Commons Apartment, a deluxe three-bedroom flat with hardwood floors throughout, spacious living area with a working fireplace, kitchen and appliances included, private entrance, private bath, prime location above a dining facility on the ground floor, and street-level pub. That's right. The campus pub was housed in the basement of Commons. It was a little pub with a lower case L. Access was along the narrow alleyway on the south side of Commons, past the dumpster and the loading dock, down a short set of steps, through a discreet side door, first door on your left across from where the print shop was and actually still is located. The fall of 1978 was also a first for the mail center as it moved from the basement of Bristol near the bookstore, bowling alley, and WHCL to its new location in Courtyard North. Courtyard North and Courtyard South were two former horse stables that enclosed and defined a small courtyard in the Dunham Green along Martin's Way. Of course, Martin's Way had not yet, not yet been dedicated as Martin's Way, 
because J. Martin Caravano from the pie face incident was the sitting president at the time. When the Mail Center later moved to the Beinecke Student Village, North Courtyard was repurposed to social space, an active and lively social space that was a precursor of sorts to the annex. I got my comeuppance when I ended up in the unenviable position of living in Dunham as a junior. On the upside, the math department was housed in the basement of Dunham for the exact four years that I was an undergraduate. Who needed an in-house dining hall and pub? Math class and math office hours were right downstairs, and they could certainly both be nourishing and intoxicating. Earlier this semester, I ran into a student near the um, Dunham parking lot. He pointed out the window of his uh, room on the basement level of Dunham. Shortly after that, it occurred to me that the linear algebra that I'd teach him later that afternoon, I had learned in his dorm room 40 years earlier. Another first in the real estate category was the fall of 1978 opening of the newly constructed Margaret Bundy Scott Fieldhouse. The alumni gym would no longer serve as the home court for basketball. The men's basketball team transitioned from the alumni gym to the field house in the midst of an impressive home court winning streak, quite possibly the longest in college basketball in the nation at the time. The streak had begun in 1975, and it ultimately lasted 50 games. The first men's loss in the field house wouldn't come until January of 1980. In the 1978-79 season, Cedric Oliver became the first Hamilton player to score 2,000 career points. Cedric Oliver still holds Hamilton's all-time scoring record without ever making a three-point basket. That's because the three-point shot had not yet been instituted in 1979. The men's basketball firsts that season pale in comparison to the women's. Women's basketball had never lost a game in the alumni gym. Of course, they had never won a game in the alumni gym either. That's because the 1978-79 season was the first for intercollegiate women's basketball and several other sports at Hamilton. So the player who scored the Women Continentals' first basket in 1978 immediately became Hamilton's all-time leading scorer with two points. In the spring of 1979, the field house would hold its first commencement at which the college would confer degrees upon its first co-ed class. Men who had lived together in Dunham in their freshman fall of 1975, alongside women who had matriculated across the street at Kirkland that same fall of 1975. I am enormously grateful and tremendously honored to have been invited to deliver this year's class and charter day remarks. I would like to give a shout out to Lisa Magnarelli, to Mark Mullen, and to Forrest Warner for their invaluable expertise. I sincerely hope that this first class and charter day in isolation is also Hamilton's last and that class and charter days 2021 and beyond are celebrated together and face to face in this hallowed space. Thank you and Carissima. Greetings members of the class of 2020 students, alumni, parents, President Whitman, other administrators and esteemed faculty of Hamilton College. It is my true honor to be here today for the Class and Charter Awards ceremony. Uh, I decided to stand behind uh, a podium so to break up the monotony of looking at someone's face in a square with a bunch of other faces in other squares as we're all doing right now in this time. As a survivor of Hamilton's rigorous academic program and a member of 
legendary coach Tom Murphy's basketball team, I considered myself fairly resilient. But in the summer of 2018, I was diagnosed with uh, glioblastoma multiform, which, which is an aggressive uh, form of brain cancer. And my education and resilience really began then. And members of the class of 2020, you are entering a world um, few, with the exception of maybe the class of classes of 1918 and 1919, have experienced. And so I want to share with you uh, a few thoughts of mine that evolved over time uh, about resilience and how that can be a meaningful tool to have. In the summer of 2018, however, I was diagnosed with glioblastoma multiform, an aggressive form of brain cancer. And as you graduates are about to enter the world of COVID-19, I wanted to share with you some of my experiences during my journey to help you navigate and succeed as you face very difficult challenges. One of the key factors I discovered is the importance of a sense of humor. Um, humor can balance out a very difficult situation. In fact, um, my plan heading into my very first brain surgery after waking up uh, was to remember to prank my son by not recognizing him. I recognized my wife and my daughter, but when he came into the room with him, I looked at him and I said, who are you? Thus was the beginning of the nickname uh, I garnered on the neurosurgical ICU floor, which I can't say in this setting, but let's just say it sounded an awful lot like the glass mole in room 642. However, I was quickly repaid when his pictures of me wrapped in bandages were immediately photoshopped onto Raiders of the Lost Ark images, Lawrence of Arabia images, and they immediately hit the social media realm. I think number two, develop a strong sense of gratitude. I figured that out very quickly. The day after my surgery, when I was able to walk up and down the hallways, when many of my hallmates were unable to move from bed and likely to face a lifetime of severe mental and physical challenges. Why, why was I granted such a pass compared to them? Even in our darkest moments, it's important to realize that there are others worse off than you. So as you experience life, be thankful for the positives. Even in the COVID world, they're out there. Um, just search for them, find them. And additionally, learn to express that gratitude. Uh, 
finding and telling my good friends how much they meant to me helped me dramatically during my journey. I wish it hadn't taken brain cancer for me to understand this, but now there's not a day that goes by where I'm not communicating with one of my Hamilton friends and then we don't end the text or the FaceTime or the phone call with an I love you. Find the people in your life that are meaningful and let them know how you feel. Don't keep it inside, let it out. Also, I think it's important that you enter those challenges with the expectation that your goal is to learn something from it and come out the other end better. Important part of resilience is not just surviving a difficult circumstance, but learning from it, growing from it, and coming out better than when you went into it. Um, the world is going to need very resilient people. The world's going to need resilient parents, teachers, educators, business leaders. And it's important that you embrace what lies immediately ahead of you right now so that when we get through this, you're even better than before. The world's going to need it. And the world's going to need you. The future is definitely uncertain at best. But you can do this, class of 2020. I know you can. I and much of the world is counting on your generation to steward us through our recovery and into the bright future that lies ahead. Again, congratulations on this special day and it's truly been my honor and privilege to be a part of it. Thank you.
It is my pleasure to recognize this year's student award winners. I would like to begin by recognizing the recipients of the prize scholarships. The Dr. Philip I. Bowman Prize Scholarship, Elijah Maris. The Madeline Wilde Bristol Prize Scholarship in Music, Kevin Sanderson. The Coleman Burke Prize Scholarship, Sapphire Ruiz. The Carter Family Prize Scholarship, Nicholas Walters. The Class of 2003 Memorial Prize Scholarship, Spencer Royal. The Class of 2009 Community Service Prize Scholarship, Jack Skako. The Thomas E. Colby III Prize Scholarship in German, Cesar Manuel Guerrero Dominic. The Frank C. and Marion D. Coleridge Prize Scholarship, Luca Katz. The Curran Prize Scholarship, Kaylee Boddy. The Ned Doyle Prize Scholarship, Bryce Fabrez. The Dr. Edward R. Fitch Prize Scholarships in Classical Languages, Daniel Flores Santiago, Catherine Miller. The Randall J. Harris Prize Scholarship, Henry Curcio. The L. David Hawley Prize Scholarship in Geology, Aaron Pimentel. The Leonard E. and Sue J. Kingsley Prize Scholarship, Denzel Capelan, Camille Laud. The Kirkland Alumni Prize Scholarship, Eileen Wilcox. The Paul S. Lange Prize Scholarship, David Gagnitza. The Calvin Leslie Lewis Prize Scholarship in the Dramatic Arts, Thomas Burley, Jack Clark, Lily Del Levine, Gustavo Gonzalez, Adanu Mutsia, the Carl B. Mengus Prize Scholarship in College Governance, Kimberly Lifton, the Robert Lee Patterson Prize Scholarships in Philosophy, Honor Allen, the Frank Humphrey Ristine Prize Scholarship, Justin Fellaber, Cliff Musial. The Jenny Rubin Memorial Prize Scholarship, Grace Wilson. The William John Schickler III Prize Scholarship, Joel Adade. The Frederick Reese Wagner Prize Scholarship in English, Kyra Richardson, Majestic Terhun. The Sam Welsh Memorial Prize Scholarship in Computer Science, Tucker Ward. The Sydney and Eleanor Wordimer Prize Scholarships in Economics, Craig Engert, Benjamin Gardner, Jingyu He, Jafar Sharipov, Zhenyi Yang. Congratulations to our prize scholarship winners. Now I'd like to recognize the winners of achievement prizes. The American Chemical Society Award, Michael Goldstein. The Babcock Prize in Philosophy and Pedagogy, Julia McGuire, Haoxian Yang. The Edwin Barrett Prize, Adira Dum. Grace Friedman, Benjamin Light, Aaron Simons, Tianzhao Yin, Sabrina Iveas. The James L. Bennett Prize, Camille Laud. The Harold C. Bone Prize in Anthropology, Sarah Carl. Mercedes Girona, Sabrina Pike. The Emily and Alfred Bone Prize in Studio Art, Elizabeth Howard. 
the Frederick Edmund Alexis Bush Award, Julian Perricone, the G. Harvey Cameron Memorial Prize, Catherine Pinecoffer, Samantha Wilkerson, the Coop Service Prizes, Zachary Ball, Neve Fitzpatrick, Devin Hebert, Lance Kilburn, Jada Langston, Abigail Rosofsky, Madeline Totman, Renee Varga, the Nelson Clark Dale Jr. Prize in Music, Frank Codwell, the Darling Prize in American History, Clara Cho, the Donald J. Denny Prize in Physical Chemistry, Nicole De Bono. The Arthur O. Eve Prize, Amar Kasim, Ramisa Tasnim. The Michael T. Jenko Jr. Prize in Photography, Hilary Bassono Ortega, Maximilian Scheidel. The William Gillespie Prize in Art, Nanaka Suzuki. The Adam Gordon Campus Service Awards, Amanda Kim, Nadav Conforti, Deirdre Schutzman. The Edgar Baldwin Graves Prize in History, Thomas Anderson, Elaine Broadwell. The David J. Gray Prize in Sociology, Claire Curran, Sarah Salimi, Hannah Young. The Mary McMaster Halleck Prize in Science, Kaylee Carlson. The Hamilton College Book Award in Russian, Emma Bellinger, Eliza glasser Kashensky, Mary Kate McNeil. The Hamilton College Campus Service Awards, Caroline Fiermadal, Jeffrey Ravenhall Meinke, Abigail Rosofsky. The Franklin G. Hamlin Prize in French, Claire Curran. The Charles J. Hasbrook Prize in Art History, Yushen Zhao. The Hawley Prizes in Latin, Alexandra Ham. The Hawley Prizes in Greek, Jeffrey Martinez. The Payne Hills Prize, Nashley Borsicot. The Holbrook Prize in Biology, Acacia Bowden, Vincent Sorrentino. The Constantine Karamanlis Prize in World Politics, Bennett Morrison. The Kirkland Prize in Mathematics, Matthew Redding, Robert Treadwell. The Neyland Prize, Camille Laud. The Jonathan Martyr Prize, Sarah Young. The Jeremy T. Medina Prize, Sarah Bargamian, Gregory Varney. The Thomas E. Meehan Prize in Creative Writing, Ruth Coolidge, Julia Dupuy. The J. Barney Moore Prize in Art, Theodore Golden, Matthew Tom. The Norton Prize, Alicia Blades, Danielle McConnell. The Walter Pilkington Memorial Prize, William Kabak. The Prizes for Excellence in Japanese Language and Literature, Yuran Ding, Shiran Fan, Yangshi Guo. The Public Policy Prize, Alexandra Stetter. The Putnam Prize in American History, Eric Fisher. The Renwick Prize in Biology, Aaron Ebert, Sean Storr. 
the Rogers Prize in Geology, Lucas Mangold, Madeline Totman. The Sadler Skinner Prizes for Excellence in Chinese Language and Literature, Bryce Fan, Alexa Goldstein. The Senior Prize in Africana Studies, Tiffany Lee, Delta Reyes. The Senior Prize in Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, Caroline Sullivan. The Senior Prize in Dance, Catherine McMorrow. The Senior Prize in Economics, Sterling Bray, Bennett Morrison, Andrew Way, Francis Zorowski. The Senior Prize in Environmental Studies, Akela Baldwin. The Senior Prize in Government, Benjamin Katz. The Senior Prize in Neuroscience, Stephen Wisser. The B.F. Skinner Prize, Ian Holm. The Senior Prize in Theater, Angelique Archer. William Bentham de Grave. The H. Samuel Slater Prize in Romance Languages, Sarah Bargamian, Lydia McGinn, Gregory Varney, Audrey Wallace, Madeline Wallace. The Southworth Prize in Physics, Omar Beasley, Cheng Shi Guo, Thomas Marsh. The Squires Prize in Philosophy, Samuel Green, Jacob Bortner Hart. The Theater Department Book Prize in Playwriting, Claire Chang, Jack Clark, Isabel Mossbarger. The Tompkins Prize in Mathematics, Chung Shi Guo, Spencer Wolfson. The Underwood Prize in Chemistry, Janice Kang, Juliana Larson. The John Lovell Waters Prize, Thomas Anderson. The Karen Williams Theater Prize, Duncan Davies, Elizabeth Ely, Rebecca Fowler, Danielle Hirsch, Emily Midgley. The Winchell Prize in Greek, Tyler Boudreau, Catherine Pierce. The Woman of Color Scholarship, Catherine Crane, Kayla Glamaud. The Wild Prize in German, James Coakley, Marie Steiner, Haoxian Yang. Congratulations to all the winners of our achievement prizes. Earlier this semester, the following students competed for these public speaking prizes. I am pleased to recognize the winners. The Clark Prize, Hao Chen Yang. The McKinney Speaking Prizes, Taomi Kenny, Samuel Lieberman, Abigail Wolf. The Warren E. Wright Prize in Public Speaking, Taomi Kenny. Now I'd like to recognize our Writing Prize recipients. The Dean Alfange Essay Prizes, William Andriola, Marlena Napier-Smith. The Adam Gordon Poetry Prize for first year students, Carmen Moses. The Doris M. and Ralph E. Hansman Poetry Prize, Madison Lazenby. The Wallace Bradley Johnson Prize, Emily Midgley. The Kellogg Essay Prizes, Gabriela de Mendoza Gomez, Jacob Hain, Kyra Richardson. The Kirkland Endowment Essay Prize in Interdisciplinary Studies, Kennedy Gilmore. The Raphael Lemkin Essay Prize, 
Alexander Cook. The Prine Essay Prize, Joseph Frazier. The William Rosenfeld Chapbook Prize in Creative Writing for Fiction, Serafina Buckholz. The William Rosenfeld Chapbook Prize in Creative Writing for Poetry, Natalie Rubin. The Soper Essay Prize, Cole Croninger. The Rose B. Tager Prize, Ruth Coolidge, Kea Hodge. The George A. Watrous Literary Prizes, Zachary Deming, Rachel Liu, Josephine Reinhardt Jones. The John V. A. Weaver Prize in Poetry, Natalie Rubin. The Sidney Stern Weiss Essay Prize in Women's Studies, Kennedy Gilmore, Kimberly Lifton. We will now recognize the fellowship and scholarship winners. The Manley F. Albright Fellowship, Estella Brenneman. The Bristol Fellowship, Angelica Coutinho. The Judge John Wells Fellowship, Marie Steiner, Emma Tynan. The Critical Language Scholarship, Christine Walsh. The Fulbright Grants for Graduate Study, Research, and Teaching Abroad, Emma Bellinger, Mary Beringaus, Ishan Bhatia, Eleni Broadwell, Neve Fitzpatrick, Charlotte Freed, Eliza Wren, Abigail Rosofsky, Joanna Zhang. The Gilman International Scholarship, Aaron Bryant, Diamond Jackson, Savannah Kelly, Lynn Kim, Maya Taliaferro. The George Watson's College, Edinburgh, Scotland Teaching Assistantship, Emma Stout. Congratulations to our fellowship and scholarship recipients. I would now like to recognize the new members of Waslos and Pentagon. The newest members of Waslos are Joel Adade, Ronan Kudzin, Matthew Lopresti, Justin Marler, Justin Perez, Olivia Seymour, Chad Varney. And Pentagon's newest inductees are Urbana Amam, Honor Gabriel, Sarah Jadbabai, Sandro Mariani, Kyra Richardson. And now back to President Whitman, who will award our last prize. One final award this afternoon is the Milton Phileas Joseph Drown Prize Scholarship. Established by the Joseph Drown Foundation and named in memory of Milton Phileas, class of 1944, it is awarded to a student completing the junior year who has been exceptional academically, has demonstrated outstanding leadership qualities, and is likely to make a significant contribution to society in the future. This year's winner has an impressive GPA, but her success extends far beyond the classroom. Since joining Hamilton, she was accepted to two different overseas programs, had a summer research experience at Harvey Mudd College, and internships at both Goldman Sachs and General Electric. She has also been a teaching assistant for the Computer Science Department. Active in countless clubs and organizations, she recently spent many hours in Utica helping low-income refugees from Myanmar, Sudan, and Iran fill out tax forms and learn English. Ultimately, her dream is to blend her studies of economics and computer science in a career that will, on a large scale, work for the betterment of disadvantaged people across the globe. It is my great pleasure to present this year's Joseph Drown Prize to Jean Jong. Had we been gathered in the chapel today, I feel sure Jean would have received the thunderous applause she certainly deserves. Congratulations, Jean. 
I would now like to acknowledge the distinguished faculty members who were recently recognized with faculty awards. The Sidney Wertimer Award, awarded by Student Assembly, goes to visiting assistant professor of Hispanic Studies, Marcelo Carosi. The Dean's Scholarly Achievement Awards go as follows. The award for career achievement goes to the Edward North Chair of Greek and Greek Literature, Professor of Africana Studies and Classics, Shelley Haley. The prizes for early career achievement go to Assistant Professor of Geosciences, Catherine Beck, to Assistant Professor of Philosophy, Alexandra Plakius, and to Assistant Professor of Anthropology, Colin Quinn. The prizes for a notable year go to Associate Professor of Theater, Mark Cryer, the Edgar B. Graves Professor of History, Kevin Grant, the Associate Professor of Religious Studies, Quincy Newell, Associate Professor of Religious Studies, Seth Schirmerhorn, and finally, Assistant Professor of Computer Science, Darren Strash. Teaching awards are as follows. The John R. Hatch Class of 1925 Excellence in Teaching Award goes to Assistant Professor of East Asian Languages and Literature, Jesse Gia. The Class of 1963 Excellence in Teaching Award goes to Associate Professor of Government, Bamendi Johnson. The Samuel and Helen Lang Prize for Excellence in Teaching goes to the Winslow Chair of Modern Science and Professor of Geosciences, David Bailey. And finally, the Christian Johnson Professor of Teaching Excellence goes to Professor of Anthropology, Chase Ledusa. Congratulations, all. We will now conclude today's ceremony with the singing of Carissima. This assembly is adjourned. <laughs>